Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's lecture, we will see the part 2 of Carrier Sense Multiple Access CSMA. In today's lecture, we will be focusing on CSMA CD and CSMA CA. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number 1, we will know the various multiple access protocols. Outcome number 2, we will understand CSMA CD. And outcome number 3, we will understand CSMA CA. And we will start with the various multiple access protocols. We know there are basically random access protocols, controlled access protocols and channelization protocols coming under multiple access protocols. Actually, they are media access protocols because the common media is going to be accessed by many stations or nodes at the same time. So we have multiple access protocols, in other words, media access protocols. We have already seen Aloha and CSMA in the last lectures and now we will see the CSMA CD and CSMA CA. Before we go into what is CSMA CD or what is CSMA CA, we will just have a recapture over what is CSMA. The principle of CSMA is sense before transmit. Before transmitting the data, any station must sense the channel and then if it finds that the channel is free, then only it should send. Otherwise, it leads to collision. When a station senses the channel, there are two possibilities. The carrier may be busy or the carrier may be idle. Carrier busy means the transmission is ongoing. Carrier idle means no transmission currently taking place and station can start transmitting their frames. Let's dive into CSMA CD. CSMA CD stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection. So the very first point is, if two stations sense the channel to be idle and begin transmitting simultaneously, they both will detect the collision almost immediately. And this point is obvious. So what we are going to do in CSMA CD is, rather than finish transmitting their frames, which are irretrievably garbled anyway, they should abruptly stop transmitting as soon as the collision is detected. So as soon as the collision is detected, the stations should stop transmitting because these corrupted frames becomes useless. So as soon as the collision is detected, the transmission must be stopped. Quickly terminating damaged frames saves time and bandwidth. Yes, because once collision happens and these run frames or these garbled frames must be thrown out of the system. If it is staying in the network for a long time, obviously it wastes our time as well as the bandwidth. So this protocol known as CSMA CD that is carrier sense multiple access with collision detection is widely used on local area networks in the max sublayer. We know data link layer has two sublayers, the logical link control sublayer and the max sublayer. And this CSMA CD is actually used in the MAC sublayer. The most widely used wired LAN technology, the Ethernet uses CSMA CD. So the access method used by Ethernet is CSMA CD. We will see more about CSMA CD now. Let's say at the point marked T0, a station has finished transmitting its frame. It means some station has finished transmitting its frame and this is the time where that station has completed its transmission. The channel has now become free. Now other stations will try to sense the channel. Once it has become free, immediately other stations will try to place their frames on the channel. But the problem is if two or more stations senses the channel at the same time and it is finding free or idle, so they will start transmitting immediately. So again collision will be the problem. So what happens before next frame is sent, there will be a contention period. A contention period is the minimum time a host must transmit such that it can be sure that no other host's packet has been transmitting. So normally between the successful transmissions of frames there will be a contention period and these contention periods will be the minimum time period and there will also be some idle periods. I will explain this idle period in the last point. Any other station having a frame to send may now attempt to do so. Why? Because at the time T0, a station has completed its transmissions. The frame it has placed is completed. Now what happens? Any other station having a frame to send may now attempt to do so because now the channel is free. If two or more stations decide to transmit simultaneously, there will be a collision. 
So collisions can be detected by looking at the power or pulse width of the received signal and comparing it with the transmitter signal. So normally the power of the transmitter signal or the pulse width of the transmitter signal will be better than the power or pulse width of the received signal. By just comparing these two signals also we can detect collision. After a station detects collision, it aborts its transmission. We already knew this because once collision has happened, the transmission must be stopped immediately and waits for a random period of time and then tries again, assuming that no other station has started transmitting in the meantime. The main idea behind this is exponential back off. That is, if two stations are trying to place their frames at the same time, when these frames collide with each other and the stations will be kept informed about this collision. Before transmitting the frame, again, each station will wait for a random period of time. This randomness only is responsible for decreasing the possibility of collision. Therefore, the model for CSMA CD will consist of alternating contention and transmission periods with idle periods occurring when all stations are quiet. So normally, it will not be the case that there will be continuously frames will be sent by all stations. When frames are sent, periodically we will be finding some contention periods. So transmission periods will be there and contention periods will be there. And there are some chances for idle periods also. When no other stations are sensing the channel, it means they are quiet. That will be the idle period. Let me explain this with the diagram. So here this is the transmission period because some station is transmitting their frame and after transmission period is over, there will not be immediately the next transmission period. So there will be contention period and as I already mentioned, this is the minimum time period where any host will check whether collision can happen or not. Then this contention period may be followed by the transmission period. So again, this is the transmission period, contention period, transmission period. And if you observe, here is the contention period, but this is the idle period. Why? Because all stations are keeping quiet. I hope now you can understand the idle period. And there is a surprise for the gate aspirants. Here is that. This is one of the important concepts for gate examinations. So I wish to provide few formulas in CSMA CD that will certainly help you to solve some problems which are related to CSMA CD. Let's see that now. And the efficiency of CSMA CD can be calculated as 1 upon 1 plus 6.44 into A, where A is TP by TT. TP means it's the propagation time and TT means it's the transmission time. So if these values are given, we can easily compute the efficiency. I'm not going to derive this formula, this is just for reference. There are few points to ponder always which will help us to crack few questions in the gate exams or even in some analytical examinations related to CSMA CD. If distance increases, the efficiency of CSMA decreases. And CSMA is not suitable for long distance network like WAN. But it works optimally for LAN. We know CSMA CD is well suited for local area networks only. But this is not suitable for long distance network which include wide area networks, satellite networks, etc. If length of the packet is bigger, the efficiency of CSMA also increases. But remember, the maximum limit for length is 1500 bytes. So here, if the distance increases, the efficiency of CSMA decreases. But here, if the length of the packet is bigger, the efficiency of CSMA also increases. But always make a note of this point, the length, the maximum length is 1500 bytes. And the transmission time in CSMA CD is greater than or equal to the round trip time of one bit. We know round trip time means it's two times of the propagation time. So transmission time is greater than or equal to two times of the propagation time. And this slide is exclusively for gate aspirants. So far we are done with CSMA CD. Now let's move on to CSMA CA. CSMA CA means carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance. It is a network multiple access method in which carrier sensing is used but nodes attempt to avoid collisions by beginning transmission only after the channel is sensed to be idle. In CSMA CD, stations used to transmit their frame once they find that collision has happened, then they will retransmit. For every retransmission, they will wait for a random period of time. So, in CSMA CD, transmission first and then only they will come to know about collision and these collisions will be detected. In a wireless environment, collision detection is not at all possible. 
So before collision can happen, we need to do something. So wireless technologies uses collision avoidance. So before transmitting, we are ensuring that collision is not happening. It is particularly important for wireless network where the collision detection of the alternative CSMA CD is not possible. Why? Due to the wireless transmitters desensing the receivers during packet transmission. And that is why CSMA CD is good for Ethernet kind of technologies, but CSMA CA is exclusively for wireless network because we can't detect collision here. So before collision can happen, we need to avoid it. So collision avoidance is the primary responsibility of CSMA CA. And CSMA CA is unreliable due to two problems, hidden terminal problem or hidden node problem and exposed terminal problem or exposed node problem. We will talk about this hidden terminal problem and the exposed terminal problem in the upcoming lecture. Though we are trying to avoid collision using CSMA CA, still our wireless network is prone to hidden terminal problem and exposed terminal problem. So we are required to concentrate on these two problems in order to handle collisions. And what is the solution for these two problems, hidden terminal problem and exposed terminal problem? The solution is the RTS CTS exchange. We have an algorithm called MACA algorithm that is multiple access with collision avoidance algorithm. We will talk about these algorithms in the upcoming lectures. For time being, we have these problems, hidden terminal problem and exposed terminal problem. And the solution for these problems is RTS CTS exchange. We have seen CSMA CD operates at data link layer. To be precise, it operates at the max sub layer of the data link layer. In which layer CSMA CA works? Obviously, CSMA CA is a protocol that operates in the data link layer, that is layer 2 of the OSI model. CSMA CD is used by the most popular wired LAN technology Ethernet. And which technology uses CSMA CA? We know CSMA CA is for wireless network. The widely used wireless LAN technology is the Wi Fi. So, the access method used by IEEE 802.11 Wi Fi is CSMA CA. We are done with CSMA CD and CSMA CA. Before we conclude, let's see the homework question. The question is, find the correct box. So two boxes are given, blue box and green box. We are required to find the correct box. Is that possible? I will remove the curtains. Yeah. The multiple access method used by Ethernet is CSMA CA and Wi-Fi is CSMA CD, which is shown in blue box. Whereas in green box, the multiple access method used by Ethernet is CSMA CD and Wi-Fi is CSMA CA. Just pause this video for a while, think of the answer and please post your answer in the comment section. And that's it guys. We know the various multiple access protocols. We understood CSMA CD and we also understood CSMA CA. I hope you enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.